Hello out there in cryptocurrency land. Welcome back to Real Crypto. Today we're going to discuss whether Bitcoin is in a bubble or not. There's been a lot of talk lately, especially on Twitter and the news about is Bitcoin in a bubble? We've had a lot of hedge fund managers come out, a lot of quote unquote smart people talking about Bitcoin and it's a bubble. Um, I don't know if they all got together one day and decided this, but whatever it is, we've been having these conversations. So let's go ahead and dive into Bitcoin and see if this actually qualifies as a bubble or not. So first of all, we have to define what a bubble is. Um, so you can define a bubble by just a number of criteria, not too many. Number one, a crazy price appreciation, an overvalued asset, a rational exuberance in the market overall, and in the end, you can't really have a bubble if it doesn't pop. If it's not a bubble, then it just goes up and stays up forever. It never actually pops. It is it is it a bubble at that point? Is it a bubble at that point? So let's take a look at these crazy price appreciation, overvalued asset, irrational exuberance, and a massive correction. So we've had about 330% run up in Bitcoin during the past six months. That's pretty good run up. Um, I don't know if it's crazy price run up, but it's definitely some good run up. 330% is nothing to, uh, nothing to shake a stick at. But if you do remember, during the stock market crash of, uh, or the stock market uh, bull market of 1999, there were many, many stocks that would go up 100% a day, 100% a day. Um, $80 billion market cap, is that an overvalued asset? Is is Bitcoin overvalued at $80 billion? Okay, we can have that argument. Um, parabolic movement in Bitcoin. We have seen parabolic movements. If you look in the background of this particular slide, you see one right there going from 200 up to 1200. That is definitely a parabolic movement. But can you call a parabolic movement irrational exuberance? Can you call it irrational exuberance? And then we have corrected twice now in Bitcoin between 70 and 80 percent. So two times we've done that. So we definitely have had some pretty big and some pretty massive corrections. So we at least fit one or two of those criteria. But maybe we're not in a bubble. You know, what are some anti-bubble arguments? Well, there's a limited supply of coins kind of leading up to leading up to these these big price movements in Bitcoin. There's also a hundred thousand new people per week globally trading in the cryptocurrency market. This is actually a statistic put up by an exchange called Bitrix. And um, yeah, they're getting a hundred thousand new clients a week. Better have some good IT people. Um, global markets, the cryptocurrency market, if you didn't know, it's global. There's no opening, there's no closing. It's a 24 seven market. It's it's literally global and there's no comparison to this kind of a market. At least with um, at least with access to retail investors, you can you can probably say Forex would be its its closest closest competition, but not really because it's a completely different asset class. And um, Forex really doesn't have a, like a business use case. It's really a lot of speculation, a lot of hedge funds, a lot of institutions trading it. But in terms of cryptocurrencies. Um, this is really a lot of retail investors pushing this forward. It's been quite spectacular. Now, Wall Street is starting to get involved now. So if Wall Street's getting involved, does that mean that the top is here? Or are, are they stupid? Are they going to get involved in something that's going to crash immediately? Probably not. Probably not. So um, also, there's no real way to value Bitcoin. We talked about things being overvalued. Is the asset overvalued? How can you, how can you value Bitcoin? It is a currency. And it isn't backed by anything. It isn't backed by revenue. It isn't backed by a company. It's literally just something that the people got together with and assigned value to. So there's really no way to value Bitcoin definitively. You can say, oh, 80 billion is too high, but that's an opinion. There's really no rational way to, uh, to quantify the value. So to answer the question, yes, we are in a bubble. <laughs> so, you know, the arguments back and forth, yes or no. We actually are in a bubble, but I think this bubble can continue for quite some time. And there's a lot of positives to being in this bubble, and I think it's fantastic that we're in this bubble. You wouldn't be watching this video if you couldn't make a really good amount of money in cryptocurrencies. Why else would you take the time to learn something that maybe you don't have a lot of experience in, which is trading, which is putting money at risk for a short-term to intermediate-term gain? Um, the reasons you would is because you can make quick money, because there's fast price appreciation. And due to that fact, um, we're definitely in a bubble. But some negatives of this bubble and these, 
you know this kind of a market is that new traders can get eaten alive very quickly there's a, a learning curve that has to happen if you're gonna trade or invest in these markets and we can help you at real crypto um, do that if you want to check out some of our videos but we do videos and live streams every day and if you're interested uh, stop by the channel and um, these moves can retrace very quickly in cryptocurrency so you have to be careful about that uh, these moves do retrace very quickly we did just hit 5,000 in Bitcoin and pop back down to 3,000 so that's a 40 percent move down in Bitcoin in about three weeks that's pretty significant and pretty fast there's a lot of people that get scared down um, you know past like 30 33 percent and you know we just had one of those runs in Bitcoin so they can retrace very quickly but the bubble cycle is pretty normal in cryptocurrencies. The technology moves very fast, so there's always new information coming out. Um, we do see fast corrections. They typically last a number of weeks, where bull cycles can last a couple of months. And to avoid these, you really have to understand technical analysis, how to read the charts and the volume, and all these kinds of di different indicators. It's not difficult, but you just need to be introduced to it. And you can avoid a lot of these bull bust cycles if you just understand how to read the charts. Now, Wall Street. I have a slide in here called Wall Street Noise. I put this here on purpose because the reason you're watching this is because of the bubble talk, and that is being propagated right now by Wall Street. Um, they're starting to play their games. It's actually part of their business model is to take money from retail investors like you and me. So they, ha they put these scare tactics out there like we're in a bubble. Um, and you just have to avoid all that noise from Wall Street. It's news. It's noise. They're, they're one and the same. Wall Street isn't here to give you financial advice through CNBC. That's not their business model. Their business model is to make money in the markets, and the only way to do that is to have somebody to sell to, and that's usually you and me. So that's their game. So pay attention to the charts to really avoid that kind of action, and uh, the reason they put this bubble talk out is because they want to scare you. The reason they're talking about it is because they want your coins that you're going to buy tomorrow. Okay, They want that coin for themselves. All right, so they're going to start talking. When Bitcoin's at 10,000, 15, 20,000, they're going to say, yeah, Bitcoin could be at 100,000. When Goldman Sachs tells you Bitcoin can be at 100,000, definitely consider selling your coins immediately because they're, <laughs> because they're looking to offload a ton, a ton of coinage. So um, there's a few things though that Wall Street hasn't figured out. Number one, this is a global market, and it doesn't necessarily care about the games that Wall Street plays. In the U.S., they'll be, obviously, will be paying more attention to the, the new press releases, news articles, interviews, things of that nature. But globally, I don't think they put as much as much weight into it. And most of the market is still really too small to care about. There's only a few coins that have really heavy um, market caps, meaning that the, their total value. Bitcoin is 80 billion. Ethereum is about 25, 30 billion at this point in time. But that's about it. Some, there's only about five or six coins that, that are really heavily above a billion dollars. So they can't put too much money to work in those without really affecting the price. So I think they're just kind of sitting on the sidelines in most of them. Um, but also, there's no options market in cryptocurrencies. There's no gaps for them to trade. The market doesn't close. So they have to buy in the open market at all times. There's no dark pools. I mean, there's all kinds of things that Wall Street is, has um, implemented over the decades in order to give themselves an unfair advantage on Wall Street. There's also no regulations, which believe it or not, plays into the hand of the retail investor because Wall Street and the Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, companies like that, they tend to, they tend to go ahead and um, basically stack the deck in their favor. You know, like there's a pattern day, tra day trading rule at twenty five thousand. You can't, you can't invest in a lot of things because, um, because of regulations that they've helped implement. So you don't have this in the cryptocurrency space. All of this. All of this really helps the open market, uh, really helps us as investors and traders. So positives in cryptocurrencies greatly outweigh the negatives, and I think they greatly outweigh the bubble factor and anything Wall Street's going to tell you. This is an extraordinarily aggressive market. You can make 20% in a day, really no problem. Um, there's not even close to full adoption yet. Like we said, 100,000 new people globally coming to market every single week. And really no cryptocurrency projects are live yet, so we're going to have Lots of news coming out. Lots of um, lots of things going to push us higher, and that's going to be really cool. There's lots of legs to run due to that fact. Uh, Bitcoin topped out at five thousand. There's nothing to say it can't get to fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand before it really tops out. Um, 
I'm not saying we don't have another correction before then. We definitely could, but there's definitely legs to run, especially with so many so many coins out there. If you're unaware, there's actually over 300 cryptocurrencies to choose from. It's quite a big ecosystem, and that ecosystem is pretty mature for how immature the overall market is. Now, what I mean by immature is, is time-wise. Um, you know, there's only been these these exchanges have only been open a few years now. Very few have been open more than four or five years. Only a few have been open that long. Um, also, there's m lots of exchanges. There's lots of exchanges, and it's a good and a bad thing because um, some of the exchanges that there can be a big spread between them. Meaning, I've seen a I've seen a twenty point spread in Ethereum, which is just crazy during during volatile markets. So. Um, that shows you how immature it is, but still, it is pretty mature in the fact that it's global, it's working, it's a market, so it's it's pretty stable. And there's life-changing money at stake here. There's just life-changing money. There's no getting around that. Um, you can have a ten times run in these coins in no time, and um, it's really it's really just life-changing money. So I think you have to get involved. So are we in a bubble? Yes. Do we care? No, we don't care. In fact, we relish in the fact that there's a bubble. We like the fact that there's a bubble. We want to ride this thing up. We want to ride this thing down. Um, in real crypto, we're traders. We're traders at heart. We try to learn this every day. So every single day we go out there and make these trades, and the bubble is what's paying the bills there. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think we're in a bubble? Um, do you think it's just a really long price appreciation? Then, then we shelf and go sideways instead of tank? What are your thoughts? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Please subscribe if you like the video. Um, hit that like button if you enjoyed it as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the live streams and in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a great one.